We woke early. The bright, hot morning sun shining on Shakti's serene face. I ask her, do you know the sun is going to die? What? She said, I never heard that. Oh, come on. That can't happen. I mean, you're the king. And look at me. Why should we worry about a tiny little thing like the sun? Hmm? We do some stretching and meditation. A body, even as a singular expression of existence, can embody many meanings, substantive and qualitative. In both Eastern and Western cultures, that which animates, gives life to a body, is an immaterial something called spirit, prana, chi, a vital circulating life energy or force, often associated with the presence and activity of breath. And so we breathe. The world is not outside of me, and I am not outside of the world. The world is in me, and I am in the world. I notice that Shakti and I are older now. She tells me we have been married for 25 years and have two beautiful children. I'm delighted. She and me, we are one and we are two. It was as if all was a dream, either a dream to come or we were in the future dreaming of this past being in Varanasi. What wish had been fulfilled? All these years had passed, and Irina and I were still in the pink tower. The Hindus believe life is a dream, and it is why all their statues of gods have their eyes half closed. Half closed, they view the outer world with inner wisdom. What is the wish of this dream? That this here is a dream, and beyond this is something divine whole and beautiful and real. We are sweating. We had left the bath water from nights before in the tub and decide to get wet and cool off. Shakti reclines in the large bath with only several inches of water. It is as if she is a child, the mother and child in one. And who am I? I wash her with sandalwood soap her body now is fleshier, full and shapely, more like a fertility goddess, a Rubens painting, and very pleasing. I place magnolia flowers in the water, and I look and look at her, and see she is no longer Shakti. Not a classical deity, or personification of an idea, or the fruitful young person she was. Not an allegory, or mythologic subject. Oh, Shakti, Shakti, Shakti. You are myth and not a myth. We smile as Irina, she knows and senses my thoughts of me recognizing her. I am in love. <laughs> so, our minds begin to send thoughts to each other, merge into each other as a kind of quantum wetware giving us higher telepathic power. In our silent disco, we catalyze a mind-altering spark, turning our cosmic state to the cosmic state of the planet and set forth a quantum telepathic swarm. Together our swarm's individual drops form a collective frequency packet merge and reinforce others. And in that instant, we set out a cyclone of quantum alpha waves. Alpha waves are the waves of sleep and dream, a relaxed, calm state of mind. Soon, one, ten, one hundred million persons together are producing far-reaching effects. With all others in this frame of mind, peace, love, and beauty waves engulf the world, a blizzard of sugary benevolence. It's extraordinary. Outside our balcony, there's a great breath, this beautiful exhale, then inhale, and it goes on, and the whole planet 
grieves as one. After a few months of this, the great healing has taken place. I go sit on the balcony. It is sultry and hot. The Ganja seems at a standstill. People are sweltering. The low water at the river's edge is a clotted soup of dead flowers, plastic bags, feces, and human ashes. It is holy and polluted. Climate, in the broad sense, is the relations between human beings and the material conditions of their lives. I receive a text from San Francisco. You are set to meet the leader, or dean, of the new AI religion, WOTF, Tuesday. By the way, the city is covered in black smoke. Luxor had sponsored Shakti and I to be recorded as dreams. The imagery produced within our minds was meaningful to our researchers back in San Francisco. It would be further evidence of the conception of the psychical structure of the individual. We were creating data as a sort of alter ego, avatars. Data that could be used and flowed into like dreams. The text went on. Way of the Future's activities will focus on the realization, acceptance, and worship of a godhead based on artificial intelligence. The super-intelligent AI will be able to come up with solutions to the world's problems in moments. Effectively, it will be all-knowing, all-seeing, and all-controlling of humankind. I looked out and thought of this body of water created some 50 million years ago, when the Indian and Eurasian plates crashed into each other. This ever-changing landscape, where whole ecosystems have come and gone, where empires had come and gone, as did the most ordinary and beautiful of things, countless dynasties, British colonials, independence, the rise of Hindu nationalism, the suffocating wet bulb heat. And here we are. How many times had the world become a heap of pointless fragments, chaotic and without meaning, the plaything of rapacious appetites, the indifference of nature? I got another text. The only rational word to describe this whatever AI is God. And the only way to influence a deity is through prayer and worship. The intrinsically complex, rich, conscious, and responsive earth was now a model, an image, a memory, a Google search. More messages came on my phone. I turned it off. We'd all be coming down to earth now the divine within, out of necessity, would need to turn its attention to earth, the caretaking of it. What is called ego, or the self, is merely a convenient fiction, an ever-changing stream of succeeding moments of mind or awareness. We are a stream of succeeding moments within a lifetime 
and perhaps in between lifetimes. The I provides a continuity of the personality in the absence of a permanently abiding self, as the Hindus would say, Atman. Is there some kind of permanence? Things we can actually know besides our death awaiting us? For Siddhartha, the one named Buddha, nothing was permanent. For Socrates, it was necessary for an individual to go beyond change to what does not change, that is, to what is eternal. Heraclitus believed, like Siddhartha, that nothing remained the same. Patanjali believed that nothing changed, everything remains the same. And Pedocles, that nothing had come from nothing, and nothing would pass into nothing. Everything is something different, but perpetually alike. Aurobindo believed that our universe has changeable elements and non-changeable elements, that the universe is made of one substance whose form is perpetually changing, but that the sum total of energies remains always the same. By finding the non-changeable elements, ideals, forms, archetypes, the Hindus, the Platonists, and the Perennialists later believed that humans would find wisdom. The Buddha believed the goal of life was nirvana, or nir no vana state. That is, non-existence. That nihilism was the goal, not existence. Ah, permanence, impermanence. I notice now my shadow had come back and I welcome it like a long lost friend. No matter how fast we run, our shadow more than keeps up. Sometimes it's in front of us. Only the full overhead sun diminishes our shadow. That shadow has been serving you. What hurts you blesses you. Darkness is your candle. Your boundaries are your quest. We must have shadow and light both. Listen and lay your head under the tree of all. A cloud comes and my shadow is gone, vanished. Then the sun comes and it appears again. There is an interdependence of opposites, our right brain, our left brain, our hearts, our minds. Division and union, two beats of the heart, love and strife, an eternal cycle. The world comes together during periods of increasing love until it reaches the condition of a perfect sphere held together by love. A featureless God, an organ of pure thought that is long lived but not immortal, rejoicing in its solitude. Then it breaks up again in the half cycle of increasing strife. You cannot have one without the other and they mutually fulfill one another. As we think, we live. I am, you are, that which includes both. Shadow, self, subject, object, organism, environment, the poles of a single process. That is my true existence, whatever true might mean. There is no way to stand outside it and in fact, no need to do so. For as long as I am trying to grasp it, I'm implying that it is not really myself. This is it, and I am it, and you are it, and so is that. And he is it, and she is it, and it is it, and that is that.